inspect this and say the system is directed against Russia. Well, uh, joining me live on the phone is Matthew Lee, the UN Bureau Chief of Inner City Press, live from uh, New York. Uh, we saw uh, Irakli Alassania, Georgia's uh, UN ambassador, making claims about ethnic cleansing. Is this, do you think, the same man who gave $290,000 to McCain's top foreign policy advisor or, or his partner uh, to back Georgia in this conflict? Right. Well, it, I, well I mean, I, I don't know if you, if, if, uh, if, I mean, I think that the, the U.S. supports Georgia for a variety of reasons beyond that one thing. But, yeah, he was, he's, I'm here at the Security Council. There's been a meeting going on all day about uh, the situation in Georgia. Mostly it's devolved into, into, into comparisons to Kosovo, with Russia calling the United States, Costa Rica, and a variety of other countries hypocrites. And uh, the, the country's coming back and trying to say how Kosovo was different. But, yes, Iraqi al Asanya is here as well. And I haven't checked his checkbook, but... Uh, of course, uh, Vladimir Putin uh, has been interviewed on CNN saying he believes the Bush administration started the war to help the McCain campaign. Um, what's the mood like there at the UN Security Council uh, as they debate this uh, in the context of yeah, that no, interview? I'll, things are, things are, are, are more contentious than I think I've, I've ever seen since I've been here over the last two years uh, in the sense that you have... Everything is coming out. Basically, you had R Russia uh, said uh, the Russian representative brought up issues about Iraq. <laughs> um, the Kosovo thing has become very contentious. Uh, country, you know, people are saying, uh, making sort of veiled personal insults. Uh, Vitaly Cherkin was asked about Putin's comment about, uh, um, you know, doing this to help McCain. And he said, this morning at least, he said it was early to, to, too early to talk about that. But he said it with a smile. So maybe when this meeting is finished, he, he will comment on that. But Things are quite, uh, uh, it's hard to imagine the U.S. and Russia working together on anything in the Security Council, whether it be Iran or anything else, anytime soon. There have been comparisons with uh, pre-First World War Europe, but uh, to complete a sort of Cuban Missile Crisis style context, Russia's testified a uh, intercontinental ballistic missile that can evade uh, all detection, according to the Russians. It flew 6,000 kilometers. Is that uh, uh, being talked about there? That hasn't that hasn't come up here yet. I guess it could come up soon under the rubric of non-proliferation. But yeah, things are, are are obviously that's a reaction to the to the missile shield. It's sort of everything. It's really it's, it's sort of amazing how quickly over the course of the month of August things have gone from you know relative sort of uh, working together on on issues to uh, very. I mean everything. As you may know, Russia put forward a press statement in the council to to deplore the U.S. killing people in Afghanistan in the, in, a, in a you know in the where they shot a missile and supposedly 90 civilians died. So that resolution won't, that, that statement won't get passed either. But everything now is contentious. It's, uh, everyone here is sort of, it's, uh, they're not sure how the rest of the agenda of the council will, will go forward. Amazing. Russia uh, talking about the killing of children by the United States in Afghanistan. Well, uh, there are four U.S. warships in the Black Sea. Do you think uh, the Americans will uh, call off the threat of those four warships? Do you think they're beaten? No, no. I mean, I, I don't know. As you noticed, they were the, the U.S. was going to deliver, said it was going to deliver uh, humanitarian aid to Poti, and then pulled back since the Russians are there and went to Batumi. I don't know if that means they're going to pull out of the, the Black Sea. But I mean, the funny thing here is that you have a whole amount of anger on both sides. But since both are nuclear states, they really sort of can't. It's kind of a strange, like a bar fight between you know professional boxers. They're not allowed under law to actually unleash anything. So, <laughs> it's a, but the words are definitely getting heated. And while all the posturing takes place, the numbers uh, for uh, the aid money that the French ambassador uh, was talking about at that meeting, $9.8 million, $14 million, doesn't seem very much. Is the international community doing enough for the people on the ground? I mean, thousands have been killed. There are tens of thousands of refugees. No, no, absolutely. I agree. I think there was some talk here that on a more, I guess, positive front. There was some, at the beginning of the meeting, there was some talk of... Uh, Probably the U.N. will do one of these flash appeals for aid, but uh, you're right. I mean, I think Russia's position is that the, the problems in South Ossetia, they can deal with you know, themselves, and they've committed a huge amount of money to it. But you're right. 